Hi everybody, it's Diane here. I am working some more on my ledger journal today, just for a little while. It's a Saturday. I have some house cleaning I need to do before I go to my granddaughter's birthday party today. But I do want to do a little bit of this because I really haven't had much time to do crafting this week with things that have been going on. Um, I mean, such as... Uh, just being distracted by the big snowstorm, which I'm still not shoveled out of. My car is still buried. My son's going to come and help me today. Um, and I had to watch grandkids because they didn't have school. And their parents had to drop them off to me since I can't get out. And um, making cookies and stuff like that for Christmas. You know, Christmas preparation is also you know, distracting or taking away from my time for doing this kind of work. So I want to do just a little bit today before I get into my housework and stuff. So I have, look at all this, all of this ledger, uh, vintage ledger papers and logbook pages and all kinds of cool things like that. I have five signatures and I believe there are ten pages in each signature. And that wasn't, and I got, I pulled the same amount for the other, oops, sorry, for the other um, journal that I'm going to put in my shop. And I still had pages left over that I had pulled. Look at all this that didn't make it into the book and more. I've got more that I didn't even cut and fold. <laughs> I have so much ledger paper, but that's awesome. I love it. I don't want to give any of it up. But that's why I'm doing this, so I can keep some for myself, and then I'll be willing to give up the other pieces into journals and things like that. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how I'm going to bind this, because my chipboard is, I think it's 8.5 by 11, and this is 12.5 inches. So what am I going to do with that? How am I going to make a spine? Well, I had this from a vintage, well, I don't know how vintage it is, um, it was $6.39 when it was purchased from McGraw Bookstore, but it looks vintage, doesn't it? It doesn't have a barcode on it, but I don't know. You just They don't make them like this anymore, I don't think. <clears throat> so anyway, this is a tall notebook, and it came with a very sturdy back. And I didn't trim off any of the height, and it's just the right size. How about that? So I cut it for two and a half inches, hoping that's going to be enough. I just wanted to show that to you, how I'm going to... The other problem I have with this size of this journal is for the one I'm going to sell, I don't know what box I'm going to put it in. The boxes that I purchased from Amazon to sell my, to ship my journals, I have two sizes um, for two, you know, two different size journals that I make. But neither one of them will accommodate the height of this. So, and it's, you know, if you find one that would be the right height, then it would be way too hot, wide or too deep. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to have to work on that before I can get that one into the shop. I have to make sure I have a way to list it. So, let's just get going. I um, collated signatures and I may rearrange pages. Because I've already seen a couple that I don't like working together. Like these two are too similar. What I did was I just went through my stack that I had pulled and started cutting and folding the pages to fit and just had them in a, in a pile. And then I just started putting them together in the order that they appeared for the most part. But there's too many right here that are too much alike. So I'm going to rearrange those at some point. And I went through my ephemera. And, and pulled out some of the ephemera that I want to keep for myself. And I started putting some of it in. I don't want to sew in on these pages because they're all vintage. So I took this um, shoe store tag and just glued it there as a little tuck spot. And I'm going to use a couple at least of my Eloise Wilkin Mother Goose playing cards that I got at the flea market. Tuck that in there. And this is my ledger paper that has the D for Diane. And on the next signature, I have the H for my last name. <clears throat> I 
This is a two by two little brown envelope that I have and I decided to save some of my mom's stamps that I love. Um, so I put this one on the front. It's a Botticelli painting and then I tucked just a couple inside. This one reminds me of a children's book illustration and this one I just like um, glassware and dishes and stuff so I put that in there and I clipped it and I can put more in there if I want to I clipped that onto the page this is just a really cute greeting card that I clipped around the page and this is this was in a box of miscellaneous stuff that I found at the flea market and I put this, I don't know if it's a ticket or what, but I had gotten this pad full of these papers <clears throat> at a flea market, and I kept this one. This I think this is the only one that was written on, but Mrs. Hubert Tucker, well, my last name is Hubert, and it's 531 South Main Street, and I lived at that time on North Main Street in my town. So I just thought it was cute. And this is in North Carolina. It's not in Pennsylvania. But I liked that thing and I kept it. So I tucked it in this little uh, photo corner envelope. And just clipped that on. Here I took a souvenir photo of Niagara Falls. And put it on as a little pocket. And tucked in... <clears throat> this playing card that I had I found a set of these at the flea market and it's got a cottage with a pink roof so that's close enough to a pretty pink cottage which is my Etsy shop I wanted to save one of those <clears throat> here's an envelope from Char or Nathan Trail remember when I found that batch of very vintage ephemera from the Trail family um, so this is Nathan and this is the postmark was on the back of it and I glued it down, but I wrote in the pencil up here, 1933, so I would remember the year. And inside is a receipt from 1974 that my dad acquired in a purchase. I have a folder full of his receipts like this. So it's got his name on it and something that he purchased at a hardware store. And then this is something that I found at a flea market. This might have been with the trail family stuff, but I love that it's got the punched out paid part on it. And it, I like the color blue. And this is really cool. A receipt for James Biles. And this was <clears throat> a bunch of stuff I found that was even older than the trail stuff. This is 1890. And I love this. So I needed to keep a piece of Mr. Biles stuff. And I like the author's cards. I, I remember being so thrilled the first time I found a set of vintage author's cards. And since then I found two or three other packs but I wanted to keep one I looked for Mark Twain but apparently I don't have Mark Twain anymore so I chose Louisa May Alcott to put there another little tuck spot this one was one page that was so long I could fold it up these ledgers are so long that most of the pages I have if I folded them up I you know I could and I might to some of these pages but it'll obviously make them shorter <clears throat> than um, the height of the book but that's okay but this one was a long one so I folded it up and I just paper clipped it I didn't glue it and I included this uh, this is another no this one isn't from Mr. Biles this is from 1891 though a check and then this beautiful very old postcard I tucked in there. I don't see a date on it.
1909, I believe. November 6, 09, it says. This yellow ledger paper I love. Um, this is a playing card. I bought these a few years ago at a flea market, and I just love them. So I get to keep one. It's pretty old. And here is a bridge tally card that I wanted to keep. Isn't she so cute? So I just put her over the top of this page. So I still have a lot to do in here, and I'm going to show you what I pulled out to work with. Where's the end? Where's the end of that signature? So I've got, I think I only did anything on the first two signatures. I have three more signatures to uh, even get started on. So I made some notes of some things I might want to try doing, and one of them was the 2 by 2 envelope full of stamps, which I did. Um, and to take a piece of scrapbook paper or something that I <clears throat> really like and just sew some bits of fabrics and laces that I like and then I can make a pocket. I'm trying to come up with ways <clears throat> to create pockets without really detracting too much from the vintage ledger quality of these books. So maybe I could put this pocket here. Like I said, I do not want to sew on these pages. This one could probably tolerate it, but I'm just not going to. But I did sew. This is a piece of feed sack fabric, and this is a little scrap from a vintage sheet. And a piece of lace that, one of, uh, that was one of my last uh, flea market trips this summer, or this fall. And I love that. So I can glue that here, and then I can tuck one of the ephemera pieces that I want to save in there. I don't want to have everything just paper clipped to the pages. Right now I'm not going to worry about what I'm putting in the pockets. I'm just kind of finding places that I want to apply these things. I also want to just do little tiny collage bits on some of the papers to decorate them. So I have this whole pile of um, things I pulled out of my collage folder. I have this that was actually on the binding of this ledger. So I'm going to use these pieces maybe in collages or tabs. That would be a cool tab. <clears throat> I have little bits of wallpapers that I love. This is a piece of vintage, like antique sheet music, and I had used the uh, image off it for a book cover, but I love that. So I have all kinds of little bits here that I can maybe collage with. Some of my favorite things, they're not all vintage. Some are just little bits of um, embossed cardstock that I love some handmade paper, scrapbook paper pieces that I just love. These are from one of my absolute favorite sets of scrapbook paper, just some scraps. So I want to work on some of them too. So let's see. Let's do one of those. I think I'm just going to concentrate on these first two signatures and then I can duplicate some of these ideas in the I'm just gonna set that aside it's gonna keep falling out I know I can duplicate some of these ideas in the other signatures <clears throat> I think I'll do a collage on this page this is just a plain um, lined paper with the green tint to it it was supposed to save your eyes when you're working in, on ledgers all day so it doesn't have any ledger marks on it I'll cover up just a little bit of it with some collage here. I have this piece from an old book, and this framed um, 
detailing was around every page. Isn't that cool? And I like the green with this green, so let's just take a piece of this. This is um, pulpy paper, kind of thick pulpy paper that tears very easily. This is wallpaper. I don't know if I'm going to use all of this piece. I might make it smaller, but <clears throat> I'm just going to play around with it first. I have some scraps from uh, mechanics book, I believe, or a math book. This must be from, I think the pages from my dad's mechanics book are much thinner, more like Bible pages. So this is from math. This is a much bigger collage than I planned on doing. I just wanted to do like a little cluster, but let's just see how it goes. We can break it down if we want to. And I got a little piece of the gold foil candy wrappers. These were unused foil wrappers that somebody sent me in a Happy Mail. And I use them a lot in collages. Like I said before, I don't know if I'm actually going to journal in this book or <clears throat> if I'm just going to use it for, you know, just keeping samples of some of my favorite items before I sell them all in one form or another. I either sell them in bundles in my shop or I put them in a journal, sell the journal. But I need to keep some samples for myself to can look through the journals and say, oh yes, I remember that stuff. I really love and even remember the day I bought it and where I bought it and how excited I was to find it. If you uh, shop at flea markets and thrift stores and estate sales, you will understand what I'm talking about. So because I decided to do this sort of thing, I think, I think this uh, journal is going to be a little more involved than I first thought. I'm just going to cut and fold up the papers and then insert some vintage ephemera and sew it together and it wouldn't take very long, but I think I want to decorate it a little bit, obviously, that's what I'm doing. And um, so I'm keeping the ledger pages and the ephemera pieces that I'm adding, but also little bits that I'm using for collage, little bits of things that I love. Not exactly loving this, so I think I will just make it a smaller collage. That flower just looks too big.
And I have to tell myself I don't have to put every thing that I want to save in this journal. I don't have to I don't want to have to feel like I need to go through everything and pull out all the stuff I want to save because I can make as many journals as I want to containing my favorite items. I was thinking about a lap book. I've seen lap books, but I didn't really pay that much attention to them because I didn't know what I would do with one and didn't know if I wanted to make one. But I saw one recently on a video. I don't remember who made it, but I thought that would be a perfect place to store postcards and greeting cards and playing cards and all kinds of bits of ephemera. So I might, for the next one, I might end up making a lap book to store some things in. So then as I make my purchases at flea markets and stuff, I can set aside the pieces that I think I want and have them all in one place and I'll be ready to go into the next project. S uh, snippets of lace and even vintage uh, fabrics that I want to keep. I can just keep all of them together for the next journal that I want to keep for myself. So there's that. Let's do one on this page. I'll use some of that embossed paper, embossed cardstock. I really love that stuff. Got a little piece right here. Love this wallpaper. Then I have these bits of ledger that I cut off some of the pages that were too wide and I kept kept them. They have the numbers on them, some of them. So I have to use those. it with the bulge sticking out that way but I didn't want the flowers to be upside down so I might have to put it on this side of the page. But this side doesn't have lines on it. it doesn't have the ledger lines. I could put it over on this side. up either of the roses. I'm just not liking the way it's going together. I have this little vintage milk ticket too that I wanted to keep. I think it gets lost in that collage though. <clears throat> I'll do something with it. Maybe this one that's in a different color would look better. I do like that better, the color. I'm just not liking this going up in one long column. I give up on that. That uh, embossed paper will have to go in some other collage. This is a silver doily. 
That looks better. I started out with that embossed paper. That's what I wanted to use, but it wasn't working with the other things I pulled out. Okay. I have other bits of uh, wallpaper pieces that I know I'll want to use, but I don't have them in here. These were just the bits that were in my collage packet. Bits I save to use in collages. Just kind of figuring my way through this journal. I've never made one like this before. I pulled out oh, a few things for ephemera, but I still have to go through some other stuff like the vintage um, sales receipts and order forms and stuff like that. Okay, let's get a couple of those. What else is on my list? Um, an envelope flap tuck spot. So let me see if I have a vintage envelope here that I want to use. Here's some of the stuff I pulled out to use either in my journal or in the one I'm going to sell. See if I have an envelope in here. There's an envelope, but it doesn't have a flap. This one has a flap, but it's still still shield, still sealed. So oh, this one, yeah, I really want one of these with a vintage window pocket. That's really cool. Maybe I'll put this inside it. I love this. This is one of my first sets of vintage ephemera that I found. Before I started going to flea markets, I got this bundle of railroad ephemera from an antique little kind of a vendor's shop, but it was small and they had stuff that cost more than at flea markets usually, but I got this whole bundle. <clears throat> And I've sold a lot of it in bundles and used a lot. It came with things like this and things like that. Wouldn't this look cool through that window? So I'm glad I still have a piece of that ephemera. So the idea was to put this, attach it to a page with the flap as a tuck spot. This is a small flap, but maybe it'll work. I have to get out my folder of um, vintage envelopes and look for some more that I can do this with. And then you can flip it over and see that, and you can 
remove the paper and look at it. Or I can because this is my book. So I just want a very thin get that out for now. Very thin bead of glue right here. I don't want to take up too much of the flap. I want to be able to um, tuck something in there. I have vintage gift seals and gift tags, little ones that you would um, decorate gift packages with. So I can decorate things like that with those little things. And I can put a little something in there. Then I thought maybe I could put some tickets together with a brad. This is a little receipt, a payment receipt. And I don't know how old it is. Oh, 1943. And I have a milk ticket, half gallon of 2% homo homogenized milk, and this um, bus ticket. This is from Great Britain. I believe, I'm sure I got that from eBay or Etsy, one or the other. Etsy probably. This is another Chicago bus ticket, and I have a whole bunch of these, and I'm not sure where I got them. I wonder if somebody sent them to me, or if I bought them. Maybe I bought them from eBay also, or Etsy. So anyway, I thought I would put a brad in this, and then attach the brad to one of the pages, and I could save some of my tickets. Let me go get my brads. Find one that looks old fashioned. Those are probably too big. Oh, I've got these that have numbers. They're cool. I think these are Tim Holtz product, an old, old set. That I never knew what to do with. This is really pretty, but it might be too big. I think that's from Stampin' Up. I like this one. These are little, so I don't know. I might like the little one. Let's try it out. And the good thing about doing it this way is you can always take it apart if you want to, you know, really look at the ephemera pieces. You can take the brad off and then put it back together again. This is crooked. And 
That looks pretty cool. Let's try it with a number. I'm going to put 13 on it because that's my birthday. Which one? I think I like it with the number. Kind of goes with the ledgery theme. signatures and in the other journal. I uh, also thought about maybe doing a belly band, maybe using a piece of ledger to create a belly band. I could tuck a card into. Oops. one of these ephemera pieces would make a good belly band. This is not written on the back. But I don't want to cut it. This is cool. This is an old um, coupon that you could redeem. You save them up to get silverware, but I don't want to cover the back. I will just use a piece of ledger paper that I can cut. Something not too fragile. Like maybe that. Maybe decorate it with a piece of this old stuff that's written on. This is written in German. Those are pieces that I got in a Happy Mail. Make it five inches. I'm only going to cut one because I don't know what size page another one will go on. that I don't mind. Well, 
I wanted to put on something I really like. I was going to say ledger I don't mind cutting into, but I really like these. And this journal is all about saving the pieces I really like. So I think I'm just going to cut a little piece off of that. straight. This is that piece of old sheet music. Kind of wish I still had some of that. I think I sold it all. All of the music. Oh, well, that was silly. Put glue on the side. You uh, are going to display. That doesn't work. I'm going to have to go pretty soon. I'll just finish this belly band and then I'll have to stop the camera or else it's just going to shut off by itself. Well, I'm glad this is just for me. I didn't want to cut off the very bottom of that because it just looks nicely aged there. I could have cut it closer to the printing, but I like that aged edge. Maybe a postcard will fit in there. I don't know if it's if the open space is wide enough for a postcard, but maybe. Or an advertising card. Oh yes. That's cute. I don't want her to get stuck in the glue, so I will just paper clip her right here. So I think I kind of have a good um, start on this and kind of know where I'm going to be going with it now, which excites me. Makes me very happy to get working on this. 
and then I can do the same treatment to the one that I'm going to sell, which if you didn't see the previous video, I will show you. Is this one, it's the same size. It's got the leather at the top and the bottom. Mine has leather corners. And this will be included in it somewhere. So, and you can see this is old and stained. But it's really cool. So I hope that you are enjoying this little project and um, are looking forward to seeing what comes next because there will be more. Thanks for watching. Have a creative day today. Bye-bye.